United States, one nation under God. Even in a country that prides itself on religious freedom, approximately 73% of the population identifies themselves as Christian. In the southeastern United States, is given the nickname the Bible Belt due to its traditional religious views. In Alabama alone, 84% of the population identifies as Christian. Only 13% are Catholic, 6% did a claim to have a religion, and only 1% identified as Jewish. In a city like Montgomery, Alabama, it would seem as though religious diversity would be as rare as tea without ice and artificial sweeteners. However, at St. James School, which is independent and non-sectarian, the students enjoy a broader exposure to various kinds of religious backgrounds, from Hinduism to Buddhism, from Protestants to atheists. The theme of religion or lack thereof is often prominently featured in our culture today, especially in television and movies. I don't believe in destiny. Yes, you do. You just don't know it yet. And happy Hanukkah! <laughs> are you for Hanukkah too? Because I'm part Jewish. <gasps> you are? Me too! <laughs> Because armadillos also wandered in the desert? Rational arguments don't usually work on religious people. Otherwise, there would be no religious people. However, even aside from that, most people in Alabama are exposed to religion, mostly Christianity, nearly all aspects of life, like simply driving down the road. Most people are familiar with different styles of worship, but not many people are familiar with the varying types of beliefs people may have even in a city as dominated by a single belief system as Montgomery, Alabama. Police were your family. What did you grow up around? Um, really mixed. Uh, my mom's family is Jewish. My dad's family is Catholic. My dad converted to Judaism before they got married. Mm -hmm. And when I grew up, we were sort of half and half. Do you think that was confusing as a child with different beliefs? Not really, because where I grew up, there, were, there was a lot of that. Because the population around suburban Philadelphia was like half Christian, half Jewish. So you knew a lot of kids who were like that. Do you define yourself as religious now? Or? I don't. All right. I don't. Um, after that, I mean, I have kind of a complicated history. What would you say your beliefs are now? I don't know. And I'm, honestly, I'm content not to know. Um, I think that the questions are much more interesting than the answers, and that there are way too many possibilities for me to be comfortable saying I believe one set of them, because I don't. And so, if I did, I would feel kind of phony, because I just, I don't have one specific set of beliefs. Describe the experience of your bar dance. Um, did a lot of studying, and I did a lot of preparing, and then, um, when it finally came to the day, I was just really ready for it. I, I still remember vividly. I have, I have the like picture in my head of when I first walked in, seersucker suit, bright red bow tie, um, and uh, I saw all these girls from my grade at school, and they were like, "Oh, hey, Nathan!" It's like something. I just really remember that. What are some less appealing aspects of your religion? Um, well, for one thing, Judaism definitely takes up a lot of time. Traditionally, you pray on Friday nights and Saturday mornings, so a lot of times that would conflict with what you would want to do, like as a teenager, like with your friends or going to football games. So you have to make a lot of sacrifices for Judaism, and in some ways, that makes it better. Like when I miss a band competition to go to the Yom Kippur service, that makes the idea of the service just even more special to me. Community is very important to Judaism, and a lot of times you might have to give up things you would do in other ways to be a part of the Jewish community. Do you think that you get treated different because you're Jewish? Well, I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, that's that's just a given because of where I live and this is just a negative aspect of being Jewish in the South. And um, that in some ways can make it better because, you know, I'm not just, um, again, not to be negative towards anyone else, but I'm not just, you know, one of the masses. I'm you know, I'm someone who's different. Like when people ask people about their beliefs, say they went down like a row of people, I would have something different, I would have something special, I would have something that I could talk about. What would you say your belief is? Often I identify myself as an atheist, but I guess I'm more agnostic because I still do think, you know, there is something out there, but I just, 
is, I don't really know for sure. To be honest, I don't really care because it doesn't really affect my life. Did you grow up in a religious household? Yes, very, very religious. I was encouraged to be in all the small groups and, you know, go to church every Sunday and Wednesday. But then when I was about 13 or 14, I started to really question why I was doing this. And it was because my parents wanted me to do it, not because I truly wanted to do it. And then I realized, well, I wasn't really following the religion. I was pretending to follow the religion just for the social aspect of it. And I didn't really even like the religion to begin with, so I'm like, why am I doing this? And then I just stopped even though I'm still forced to go to church to just day and every Sunday. Are you open about your religious beliefs at school? Uh, yeah, I have no problem telling someone about them if they have any problems, but I won't, I won't belittle anyone's religion if I don't believe it. What influence has your religious beliefs had on your social life? Um, well, I guess I've made a lot of friends at church because I go to church every Sunday. We have Sunday school and I go to a class with like the people that are my age and then we go on church trips and different retreats so I get to meet friends there and what are the less appealing aspects of your religion? I would say the less appealing aspects of Christianity is that it doesn't promise an end to suffering. It accepts the fact that there will be suffering. It says that in the Bible. Other religions like um, their goal is to end suffering and like to offer like peace and like happiness but in like Christianity, like Christians, we accept that that like it's like there's sin and it's not gonna be like perfect and it's not like happiness. And... What's your favorite Bible verse? Oh, oh crap! What's the... Isaiah forty thirty one. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. I got it, Belton. Awesome. It's like you wake up one day and you're like, I'm meant to do a certain thing, or I'm meant to know this person, and other days you're like, there's nothing out there guiding me, I'm just out floating on my own, so I don't know. It's kind of hard to answer that question because I feel like it kind of depends on the situation. I don't think anything is random, but I don't think that everything is up to fate. I think some things are up to fate and some things are, are things that you can do yourself and like make up your mind to do. So I think everything either happens because of fate or happens because you want it to be a not random. Okay, I believe in free will. But at the same time, I believe certain people are who they are from the beginning. So there are certain aspects of everyone. This is what makes people individuals that you cannot change. Otherwise, if you could change them, if you could make everyone the same, What's the point of living? I mean, that's not really beautiful. That's just, you know, boring white black walls. I feel like it's kind of like it's sort of a combination because, like, I do feel like God like has a plan for us, but like, I don't know, predestination, predestination is kind of a hard concept. But I do think we have a choice because we can choose if we want to like follow God or not. So I do think we have a choice. But he does also have a plan for us, but, so it's kind of a conflict. There is diversity in Alabama, especially at schools like St. James, but not all viewpoints are orthodox. We are all our own people with different beliefs. <laughs> oh, so the worst part about Christianity is that Jesus is dead, but he's alive in our hearts. It's alive every day. This is Jesus. <laughs> Hi, I'm Taylor Meadows. So you have to swap, right? No. Or this is the real thing. This is the real thing. Real thing. Real thing. So anyway, my mom didn't want that to happen to us, so our whole childhood she said no. Santa Claus is definitely real, but he doesn't have enough time for our house. That's why we give you gifts. <laughs>